Hey buddy, my name is Shu Teak, and if I find out that you're jacking off to my videos, I'm calling the police. I was in need of an EQ I could use for both stereo mixing and mastering, so I built a pair of these. Dawn Classics 250 EQs. The 250 EQ is a 500 series version of the fully parametric Sontec MEP250A equalizer. The MEP250A is known for being smooth, surgical, and most importantly, musical. Made in the late 1960s, the inductorless Sontec MEP250A can be found in mastering suites across the world. At the time of recording, I couldn't find a single 250A for sale online. When people get a hold of these things, they don't let go. The old listings I could find went for around $3,500 in 2019. That's $4,200 in 2023 dollars. Wow, I love getting ass blasted by inflation. Today, we're going to dive into the controls, build notes, and the calibration process. Along the way, we'll listen in to a couple of examples of the 250 EQ in action. We're even going to use a little piece of software called Burdum EQ Analyzer to get a visual look at how the 250 EQ works. At the end, we'll talk about who will benefit the most from a 500 series MEP250A. Let's try some EQ on a lead vocal. I'm going to roll off the low end to get rid of any noise or rumble. Pay attention to the settings on screen to see exactly where I landed with my cuts and boosts. The controls on the 250 are densely packed, but you'll quickly work up the muscle memory needed to control each frequency range. The large knobs in the left column allow you to select a frequency band to reduce or increase. You have your highest freaks on top and lowest freaks on the bottom. There's a decent amount of overlap between bands. The smaller knob here is the Q control, which allows you to sweep from wide to sharp and everything in between. The right column contains your level controls. You can reduce or increase a given frequency by 12 decibels. You also have the option to toggle the white highs and red lows from the standard bell shape to a shelf filter. A shelf boosts or cuts all frequencies above or below the selected cutoff point. In the center, you have a toggle labeled EQ in, which is used to bypass the effect. The effect is bypassed when the toggle is in the up position. This is really useful for checking changes you're making and ensuring you're on the right track. I know that some of you are visual learners and remedial listeners, so let's turn all this equalization into something visual. My goal with these examples is to give you an idea of how the unit will function and feel while you're using it. For this, I'll be using the Burdum EQ Analyzer 2 plugin. It's a pay what you can software. Just like everything else on the channel, I paid for this plugin and the 250 EQs out of my own pocket. If you find this stuff helpful or interesting, it would mean a lot to me if you would like the video and subscribe to my channel. The frequency screen printed on each band of the 250 EQ varies slightly from what we see in Burdum EQ. The screen print on the 250 is there to get you into the right ballpark. Let your ears tell you where the truth lies. Let's start by selecting 1 kHz on the green midband. I'll give this a 6 decibel boost. Now let's adjust the Q control to see how sharp and how wide we can make it. Nice! Now I'm going to use the blue mid-high control to set a 7 decibel boost at 2.5 kHz. Now let's sweep the frequency knob from low to high. Pay attention to how smooth this is and the range which it covers. Finally, let's take a look at a shelf filter. 
I have my shelf toggle engaged and I'm using the red low frequency control to select a 100 hertz cutoff point for my filter. The Q can be used to change the slope of the filter. Now we're going to treat some bass guitar. I've got a direct in setup that could use a little something extra. For this, I'll start with a low pass filter. I'll boost and cut in the 80 to 300 hertz range. I'll also add a boost around 500 to 1000 hertz for a bit of punch. The PCB for the build is a little bit crowded, but overall I found that this was easier than other 500 series units. It's in the intermediate zone. There's a manual from Don Classics which covers the unique or complicated parts of the build. Each frequency section is the same layout with different value parts, so you'll quickly get into a rhythm. The 250EQ can be built for 500 series or 51X. I'm a 500 series user, so my build is set up for 16 volt rails using instruction A of the build guide. This is the only build I've needed to use a saw for. 500 series users need to saw off the extra gold fingers that used to be located here. Don't be nervous, it'll be fine. I opted for the kit which includes the Omeg concentric pots. This is a nice convenience as these would be a pain in the ass to source separately. I've used Omegs in other builds, and they've treated me well to date. The kit includes polystyrene caps. My understanding is that this material has a low distortion factor which makes it sound better. These will also last longer than other capacitor types. The standard op amps for the kit are TL071s. I've personally tried these. They sound great in the circuit, but I wanted more. I didn't just want transparent, I wanted lively. For this, I landed on APP992s by Pierre Paolo. These op amps are transparent, neutral, and clear with a hint of FET magic. Pierre says the APP992s are neutral but not cold, and I think that's an excellent assessment. The APP992s are an excellent choice if you plan on using a pair of EQ250s for mastering. These are available for sale on Group DIY. I'll link to Pierre's page in the description of this video. For creating the ribbon cable, I recommend getting an IDC tool. I had to replace one of my headers because I tried to make the ribbon cable with a set of pliers like a jackass and broke one. You could also use a vise to build the cables. There are a few calibration items that need to be completed before the unit is fully operational. For this, you'll want to utilize a test jig. You can get these from Sound Sculptor in the EU or Cappy in the US. First up is a bias adjustment on each of the five filter sections. For each section, you'll need to place a multimeter set to millivolts across these handy little test points labeled TP1 and TP2. Adjust the R70 trim pot until you see zero millivolts. You'll need to do this for sections A through E. Now we're going to make an adjustment that will minimize EQ switching noise. Make sure the unit is set to the EQ out position. Put your multimeter across test points TPS1 and TPS2 and use the trim at R83 to achieve zero millivolts. Finally, we need to adjust unity gain. Send a 400 hertz minus 18 dBFS sine wave to the 250 EQ. I'll do this using Studio One. Here you can see the signal generator creating my sine wave. Over here is Pipeline XT, which I'll use to monitor my output and input gain. Adjust the Unity Gain trim pot until the input level is the same as the output level. The Don Classics 250 EQ is exactly what I was looking for. A high quality EQ for use with both mixing and mastering. 
The EQ sounds great and doesn't have any sort of undesirable impact on source material. The 250 is nice because it doesn't impart the massive amount of character that something like a Poltec would. I personally find myself using this EQ in very broad strokes on buses or an overall mix. I think the best way to think of this EQ is like a coat of polyurethane. It's the perfect tool for adding that nice bit of gloss to your song. But look what this year. 